Good morning, and welcome to worship at St. Peter's Lutheran Church online. I'm Pastor Ruth Hetland. The seasons keep changing, and soon another year of Christian education begins. This year, we will begin with some outdoor activities and sending some lessons and activities home with parents and kids to do together. We'll, we will also continue to make use of online forms of communication with the youth. I'll be having weekly confirmation gatherings on Zoom, and the Christian Education Committee plans to meet again in October to reassess our situation and how we will proceed as the weather gets colder. Looking ahead, we will have Rally Sunday on September 13th with an outdoor service at 10 a.m. Bring your pet as we will have a blessing of the animals during that service. And afterward, there will be some fun activities for kids and families. And that day, we will send home some boxes with activities and lessons for at-home Sunday school in September. And as of right now, we plan to do the Rite of Confirmation at an outdoor service on October 4th. We have six wonderful confirmands who will be affirming their baptism on that day. Jaden Cole, Alex Francis, Devin Monroe, Tatum Nelson, Dakota Parr, and Maya Rosing. We know, may, we know we may have many guests with us that day, and so the best way to accommodate a large crowd during this time is to be outside. Our third graders will also receive their Bibles that day. It will be a fun and festive occasion. But our preparedness committee will be putting up signage and marking off the pews in the sanctuary in early September so that the sanctuary will be ready when we do decide to move worship back into the building. Our hope is to stay outside as long as possible because we believe that is the safest option and it allows the most people to come together and not be at risk. However, when the temperature begins to dip uncomfortably low and the snow starts to fly, we will come back inside. But worship will be different than we are used to when we come back inside. The services will be shorter. There will be no congregational singing, no coffee time, at least for a while. And so while I can't wait until we can be back in our sanctuary, I know that the changes we need to make will take some time for us to get used to. And so some of you may decide that you want to continue to worship online. And of course, that's fine. We will always make sure that these online worship services are available to you from St. Peter's. But as we continue to go through all these changes, please know that you are in my prayers and please keep me in yours. And I hope to see you on Rally Sunday. Please do come to that outdoor service that day. It will be so good to be together and to see your faces. Keep in mind the women's group is collecting school supplies. The list of needed items is in your newsletter. And today we are having our outdoor worship as usual at 10 o'clock. If you are in the area, please come by. And today, as we are having some internet issues at the church and trouble with our uploading, I wasn't able to get my sermon recorded and uploaded in time for this pre-recorded service. And so, I found for you a wonderful sermon on today's text from Micah Jackson. He is the Bishop Johns Elbridge Hines Associate Professor of Preaching and the Director of Comprehensive Wellness at the Seminary of the Southwest in Austin, Texas. I know you will enjoy it. It's a lovely, lovely message. So let's begin our time of worship with the call to worship. And this is based on our gospel for today. We gather together to worship the God of our fathers and mothers, the God of Abraham and Sarah, of Miriam and Moses, who hears the cries of God's people and comes to their aid, who meets us on holy ground and calls us to follow, who invites us to leave our selfish ways behind, take up our cross, and discover what it means to be truly alive. This is our God. Let us worship together. And now hear the invitation of Jesus. If any of you want to be my follower, you must turn away from your selfish ways, from the things you think you want and need. 
you must pick up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on for your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. What is it that you need to turn away from in order to follow Jesus more closely? Are there things you may need to give up in order to follow Jesus more closely? What do you hear Jesus calling you to do? Let us pray. Merciful God, help us to turn away from things that do not lead to life from attitudes and actions that get in the way of our relationship with you and distract us from hearing your voice and doing your will. Open our eyes and ears to your presence and your call. Give us courage to take up our cross and follow where you lead, even if the path is uncertain or leads in unexpected directions. For you alone are God, and we are your people. Take our lives and use us to your glory. Amen. Open unto me light for my darkness, light for my darkness, open unto me, open unto me. Light for my darkness, open unto me, O God. Open unto me, strength for my weakness, strength for my weakness, open unto me, open unto me, strength for my weakness. The book of Matthew. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and understand the great suffering at the hands of the elder and chief priest of scribes, um, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside to be to rebook him, saying, God forbidden it, Lord, 
this must never happen to you. But he turned, turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind on divine divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told the disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me for those who want who want to save their life will lose it lose it and those who lose their life for the sake will find it for what will be profit then they will gain the whole world but from for felt their life or what will give in return for their life for the son of man is to come with the angels in the glory of his faith and then and then he will repay everyone for what has been done truly i tell you there is some standing who will not taste 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 death before they see the son of man coming in his kingdom Did you see what happened in that story? There were two people and they both built houses and one built his house on a rock and the other built his house on the sand. And the house built on a rock was fine when the storm came, but the house built on sand fell apart in the storm because it had no firm foundation. And Jesus used to talk about that. He used to tell a story about how we need need to build our lives on God's word. And that's like building our lives on a firm foundation. 
That's why we listen to what Jesus taught us, so that we'll always have that strong foundation of God's word to lean on. And that's why I can't wait until Sunday school starts again, because I know how important it is for you to be hearing Jesus' words and building your life on them. Even though Sunday school is going to look a little bit different this year as we get started, we're going to meet outdoors to begin with, and we'll, we will send home some lessons for you to do with your families. We'll have some things online for you too. But no matter what, we're going to make sure that you keep learning about Jesus so you can always have the strong foundation of his love to build your lives on. So Rally Sunday is September 13th, and we're going to have um, Blessing of the Animals that day as well. So you can, you can bring your pet to church, and we will have that blessing right during the service at 10 o'clock. And then afterwards, we're going to have uh, some activities outside for families, and it's going to be a wonderful day. So that's Sunday, September 13th, when Sunday school gets going again, and I can't wait to see you. So please bow your heads and pray with me today. Dear God, we pray that you always help us to build our lives on the strong foundation of your word. Help us to listen to you and what you have to say to us. God, bless all the kids in our church and in our community and in our world. And as school gets started soon, we pray for uh, safety for all the students, for all the teachers, everyone who works at the schools. And God, please be with us. Help us remember you are with us always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great day. God bless you. It would surprise many people, even those who think they know me well, to find out that in high school I had a favorite gym teacher. P.E. was by far not my best subject, but this guy became very important to me. His name was Coach Patlack. He would introduce himself to you all the time, always spelling his name. The time he introduced himself to us on the first day of gym class my freshman year and the time he introduced himself to my parents at graduation were almost identical. I'm Coach Patlack, he'd say, P-A-T-L-A-K, and I am the meanest guy you will ever love. Yeah, he was a strange man, but he was a straight-ahead guy. He said what he meant. He said just what he was going to insist that you were going to do in class, and he said that he knew for sure that you could do it if you concentrated and bent your knees and followed through. The extent to which I have any kind of jump shot today is due almost entirely to Coach Patlack. One day in class, somebody asked him, why are you always going on and on about how hard basketball is? Haven't you ever heard of positive reinforcement? Now I remember he said, why should I lie to you kids? Basketball isn't easy, but you can do it. Okay, he didn't actually say, why should I lie? He used a much more colorful metaphor that involved sunshine and a part of your body where it isn't normally found. But the sentiment was there. And he'd probably be horrified to hear me compare him to Jesus in the gospel passage from this morning. But I don't think that Jesus would. I think that Jesus was just trying to tell the disciples what was going to happen so that they could be ready. And so that when it got hard and started to seem like it was all out of control, they might be able to remember that Jesus knew all along how hard it was going to be and that he knew they could do it. They would just have to concentrate and bend their knees to pray in Jesus' program and follow through. And everything he told them was true. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. Now, despite what you might think after hearing some of Jesus' more confusing parables, he was himself a very simple, straight-ahead guy. He didn't believe in sugarcoating the truth of discipleship or about minimizing the reward for those who believe. 
And so into this story comes Peter, the ever-loving, fiercely loyal, hot-headed, never able to plan much beyond the end of his arm, Peter. He rebukes Jesus, probably because he fears that Jesus is being too negative. Can't you just see him pulling Jesus aside and saying, this is too much. Haven't you ever heard of positive reinforcement? And then Jesus uses the first century equivalent of Coach Patlack's metaphor about the sunshine in your backside. He says, get behind me, Satan. And Peter, as often, doesn't get it. Jesus taught all these things openly because they are true. And it's always better to know what the risks are and the rewards are before coming into something. In response, Jesus gives an even more difficult teaching. He says that not only will he undergo great suffering, be rejected and be killed, but so must his followers. He says, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. This must have really infuriated old Rocky, but it's true, too. And again, Jesus offers this teaching quite openly. He wants those who would become his followers to know what is coming. But he also wants to make clear what the reward will be, and that he knows the people can do it. Jesus wasn't only a man, but he was fully human with all the possibilities and limitations that means for all of us. So if Jesus, trusting in God's promises, is unafraid to pick up his cross and set his face to Calvary, then we can do it too. And if death will have no claim on the Son of Man, then it will have no claim on his followers either. Now, sisters and brothers, I tell you this quite openly like Jesus did. If you pick up your cross and follow him, you will die. We live in the United States in the 21st century. So it's unlikely that you'll have to physically die for the gospel. It's possible, of course, but unlikely. But that's not the only way to die. Under Jesus' instruction and under the weight of the cross, you will find yourself doing all kinds of things you would never expect. All sorts of things that you might have once thought, I would never be caught dead doing that. Maybe you've heard someone say, or maybe you yourself have said, if I had to sit down and have lunch with a homeless person, or ride herd on a bunch of teenagers on a mission trip, or change a diaper in the nursery, or hear all the details from a woman who had been abused by her partner, or spend all day in the hot sun lifting 50-pound sandbags in rural Mississippi, or hold the hand of someone near to death and then cry with the family afterwards, I don't know what I'd do. I might die. Yes, you would die. If you truly want to become a follower of Jesus, you will do all these things and more. And the person you were, the one who couldn't imagine being in those situations, will die. And in her place, and in his place, God will resurrect you into a life more wonderful than you could possibly imagine. You will lose your life, yes. But if you give it up out of love for God and for the sake of the gospel, you will gain your life, your real life, the one that God has set aside for you to live in the kingdom, the one here on earth and the heavenly one as well. As a coda, I want to draw your particular attention this morning to one of Jesus' words. Remember how he told the crowds, if any want to become my followers, let them take up their cross and follow me. Well, here's another hard teaching, but like Jesus, I tell it to you quite openly. This kind of sacrificial service, the kind I've been talking about today, the kind that requires the death of the self you knew before, it's not something to be done only by those who are strong in the faith. We who are leaders in the community, preachers and teachers of the church, we're called to endanger ourselves for the gospel, yes, but so are you. 
Even if you're hearing the story today for the first time and are just wondering what is the first step in following Christ, it's this. If any want to become my followers, let them take up their cross and follow me. Believe in Jesus Christ and his promised resurrection. Bend down and pick up your cross. And don't forget to bend your knees. I can hear Coach Patlack saying those crosses can be heavy. And then get in line. For we are all following Christ, following him to Calvary, straight through the crucifixion, and on to whatever God has in store for us beyond. Let me hear it, let me hear it in the morning. I gotta hear the story of your steady, steady life. Let me hear it, let me hear it in the morning I gotta hear the story of your steady, steady love I'm trusting you, I lift my life to you today Cause I'm confused and I cannot see the way Let me hear it, let me hear it in the morning I gotta hear the story of your steady, steady Trusting you, I 